Good morning and to today's reflection. I wonder how you get on with poetry. Perhaps you're a bit like me in that having studied some poems in English lessons at school and having failed to make much sense of them, you more or less gave up on poetry in later life. I remember that at least some of them told a story. Tennyson's Lady of Shalott or Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, for example. But I couldn't help wondering, wouldn't it have been much simpler just to tell the tale in ordinary language? It was many years later that I came across something in the writings of Eugene Peterson, translator of the Message Bible and himself a poet, where he says, The job of poetry is not to supply information, but to stimulate imagination. We find poetry difficult because we are trained in the world of information, but not in the world of imagination. When I read a poem, I have no more information, but I have more experience. People who pray need to learn poetry, even if they are not very good at it. Well, that's all very well, but I still find it difficult. And if I'm honest, I think I know why. Eugene Peterson again. We cannot speed read a poem. A poem requires rereading. Unlike prose, which fills the page with print, poems leave a lot of white space. There is a lot to see, to feel, to sense. We sit before the poem like we sit before a flower and pay attention to form, relationship, colour. We let it begin to work on us. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Our besetting sin is impatience. That quote rings true for me, and maybe for you too. Mostly, I'm not prepared to invest enough time and effort in the reading, the shutting out of distractions, the quietening of the mind necessary for the poem to do its work. So too often, I just go off and Google something more trivial instead. Some poems, especially perhaps those written for children, are simply fun and require no profound reflection, but the best of them can still take our thoughts in unexpected directions. Steve Turner is a master at this. Consider these couplets. These are the good old days. Just wait and see. Or, history repeats itself. Has to. No one listens. Short is not necessarily simple, but long is certainly challenging. I have a challenge just now. At Christmas I was given the collected poems of Norman Nicholson, nearly 450 pages of his works, into which I have so far only just dipped. He was born and lived and died in the same house in Millham, Cumbria. A blue plaque, badly rusted now, marks the spot, number 14, St George's Terrace. And yet this small town house did not cramp his imagination, nor his powers of observation, on which many of his poems are built. The major challenge to the reader, or at least this one, comes in trying to see things through his eyes, to read them, as it were, looking over his shoulder. Of course, much of the Bible is written as poetry, not least the Psalms. And here, the challenge may be similar, to read whilst looking over the writer's shoulder. Unlike most other poetry, the Psalm poems are expressed first and foremost to God, but in reading them we imagine ourselves into the context of their writing so that they become, in a sense, our own experience too. And they're full of word pictures enabling this to happen. For example, Psalm 18, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. The 50 verses of this psalm celebrate, as its heading indicates, what David sees as God's protection over him as his enemies are seeking to destroy him. In fact, he uses multiple metaphors, an essential tool for the poet, to repeatedly express his gratitude and relief. Then equally in other psalms, other metaphors are used to illustrate his plight when things are tough and he pours out his complaint. So either way, we can, so to speak, inhabit his world as it reflects our own lived experience. I think I would say that poetic language is the first language of prayer, 
whether adoration, thanksgiving, confession or intercession. Otherwise, we're simply preparing lists, collating information about all the stuff God already knows. So let me encourage you to pray the Psalms, but also to find your own inner poet and use that language in conversation with God. So let us pray now. Lord, you speak to us of your truth in many and varied ways, and we ask that our answering speech may likewise emerge from the, the lived reality of our experience. Please teach us to pray. Amen. Thank you. Have a, a good day.